Hi, today's topic is on epidemiology and public health aspects of periodontal disease. At the end of the topic, students should be able to explain the public health concern of periodontal diseases, analyze the role of risk factors in periodontal diseases, plan preventive strategies for the control of periodontal diseases at individual and community levels. Periodontal disease is a chronic inflammatory disease of periodontium and its advanced form is characterized by periodontal ligament loss and destruction of surrounding alveolar bone. It is the main cause of tooth loss and is considered one of the two biggest threats to the oral health. Coming to the classification of periodontitis, one is adult periodontitis, then early onset of periodontitis. Under early onset of periodontitis, there are prepubertal periodontitis and juvenile periodontitis. Under prepubertal periodontitis, it is generalized and localized. In juvenile also, it is same, generalized and localized. Another type is rapidly progressive periodontitis. The third is periodontitis associated with systemic diseases. Then necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis then refractory periodontitis. This is the classification for periodontitis. There are many classification. I, uh, you can check in Karenza textbook. Measurement of disease. There are many indices among this following three are used widely. First one is result periodontal index, then CPITN and CPI. In the WSO performa, uh, to measure the periodontal condition, most commonly used is CPI. And in your indices discussion also, we have discussed about CPI and CPI-TN. A current model of periodontal disease. Only a small proportion of persons exhibit severe periodontitis. Severe means both loss occurs or is in threatened. Myogingivitis is common. Most adults exhibit some loss of bony support and loss of probing attachment while still maintaining a functioning dentition. Gingivitis and periodontitis are associated with bacterial flora that have some similarities and but also some differences. Gingivitis precedes periodontitis but only a friction of sites with gingivitis later develop periodontitis. Although usually related to age in cross-sectional surveys, periodontitis is not natural consequence of aging. Periodontitis is not the major cause of tooth loss in adults except perhaps in the oldest age groups in some population. Periodontitis is usually a site-specific condition only occasionally seen in generalized forms. Generalized periodontitis is usually severe and of the early onset type. Periodontitis is usually thought to proceed in burst of destructive activity with quiescent period between the burst. Coming to the etiological factors. Local factors like deposits in the teeth, around the teeth, then habits, food impaction, abnormal anatomy, lack of lip seal, abnormal occlusion, dental treatments. Under systematic or systemic factor, debilitating diseases, blood disorders, endocrine dysfunction, malnutrition, allergies, psychogenic factor, iatrogenic factors. So low end associates uh, describe the gingivitis like it will be more in interproximal than buccal than lingual surfaces. In the upper arch more in interproximal and buccal areas. In the lower arch more in lingual areas. In the lower premolar and upper canine is least affected. Right off is more affected than left off. This is the distribution of periodontitis in mouth. Coming to epidemiological triad, triad includes agent, host, 
environment under the agent physical chemical and nutrition then in the host demographic biologic and life cycle last story lifestyle then environment its physical biological social and economic so this is epidemiological triad and where all this circle meets then only the periodontal disease will start come to risk factors of periodontal disease like age 15% at 10 years 38% at 20 years 46% at 35 years 54% at 50 years so the people who are aged definitely they will have periodontitis in the meantime they will be having other oral diseases come to general gender males are more affected than females but in dental caries females are more affected than males in juvenile periodontitis females are more affected than males race national health survey shows that blacks are more affected than whites but in dental caries it was reversed whites uh, i think in dental caries also same Spanish Americans had more severe periodontal disease than blacks and whites. Endocrine changes. Severity that is puberty, menstrual and pregnancy due to hormonal changes there will be severity of periodontal disease and then in the hyperthyroidism. Come to the occlusion, trauma from occlusion, plunger cusp, tooth not in self cleansing area. Yes, these are some of the occlusal factors which leads to perdonant then education inversely proportional to education higher the education lower the perdonant is lower the education higher the perdonant is then social economic status higher in low social economic status due to high cost of dental services poor diet poor hygiene status then lack of dental awareness habits tobacco smokers and chewers have more uh, prone for uh, periodontal disease then occupational habits like holding nails teeth by carpenters holding needles by tailors lip biting cheek biting bruxism nail biting may increase periodontal disease then con concomitant diseases Psychological and cultural factors like anxiety about dental treatment, misconception and taboos, harmful cultural habits like chewing tobacco, bitter nut chewing and severe uh, smoking etc. Under the stress, anuk like acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis and nuk necrotizing ulcerative periodontitis. So these are stress induced periodontitis. Then professional dental care. Like incidence and severity is lower in individuals who receive regular dental care. And uh, the last oral uh, host factor is oral hygiene practices. 50% of the toothbrush users are not aware of proper brushing technique and other oral hygiene aids like dental floss. So they are more prone for periodontal. Coming to agent factors. First is dental block. Second is calculus. So this is the uh, flow chart. First will be the dental block. Dental block contains bacteria. So bacteria directly act on tissue and tissue damage. So this bacteria activation the immune mechanism. Then due to that immune activity there is a loss of tissue. So leads to periodontal disease bacteria immune dysfunction like some healthy bacteria which supports periodontal health that will dysfunction then also periodontal disease so calculus the it is of two types super gingival super gingival and sub gingival National Oral Health Plan for Malaysia 2011 For 12 and 16 year old school children, National Oral Health Plan 2010 targets for healthy periodontium that is CPI 0 have not been achieved. 
Overalizing self-care among adolescents appears to be largely ineffective. Periodontal health among school leavers and adults saw a marginal improvement from year 1990 to 2000. The proportion of 15 to 19 year olds with healthy periodontium increased from 17% in 1990 to 26% in 2000, while those presenting with calculus declined from 69 to 60%. In the age group of 35 to 44 years, the proportion with healthy periodontium remained unchanged at only 5%, while those presenting with the calculus decreased from 61% to 55%. In the same period, however, the proportion of 35 to 44 years old with pocketing of 4 to 5 mm increased from 23 to 28.5%, while well, those with deep pockets declined marginally from 9% to 7.2% in 2000. Overall, high prevalence of periodontal conditions exists in the adult population. That the majority of school leavers and adult presence with bleeding gums is a cause for concern. Since it is seen as a reflection of widespread ineffective personal oral hygiene practices which will most likely impact more severely on periodontal health in later life. Impact of chronic periodontitis like this is a public health problem, gingival bleeding, loss of periodontal attachment, recession, periodontal abscess, drifting of teeth, mobility of the teeth loss of teeth, change in appearance, halitosis and social unacceptability, discomfort and loss of achieving functions. Prevention strategies that is for the population that is population strategy mainly a secondary prevention. Uh, this is for socially deprived people. According to this the prevention of calculus formation which acts as an impediment to keep the teeth clean. This is for high risk people that is tertiary prevention uh, like uh, smokers and uh, diabetic and cardiovascular disease patient for them who are at high risk and are susceptible to periodontal disease. Then levels of prevention. This method of prevention or this process is like uh, is uh, done by service provided by the individual like health educators under the primary prevention under health promotion that is periodic visit to dental clinic and demand for preventive services this is provided by health educators like that under specific protection oral hygiene practices we have to teach them then secondary prevention that is early diagnosis self-examination referral and utilization of dental health services under tertiary Disability limitation, utilization of dental services and rehabilitation also utilization of dental services. So under service provided by the community, <clears throat> under primary prevention and health promotion, dental health education program promote of lobby effects, efforts. Then specific protection, provision of oral hygiene aids, supervised school brushing program. So this is like when we go for a community camp, what all things we will do? That is service provided by the community. Then secondary prevention, that is early diagnosis and prompt treatment under this periodic screening. If there is a decay, we have to refer. That's what we do in our dental camps. Then parent, uh, tertiary prevention, that is de disability limitation and rehabilitation. Under disability limitation, provision of dental services. Same thing goes for rehabilitative This is services provided by dental professionals under primary prevention and oral health promotion, patient education and recall and reinforcement. Special protection includes plaque control and correction of malaligned tooth and proper oral prophylaxis. Secondary prevention includes early diagnosis and prompt treatment. Under this, complete examination, scaling, curatage then corrective, restorative and occlusal services. This is done by dental professionals, that is dentist. Then tertiary prevention, 
here already there will be dk and grassy district sorry um, there will be uh, um, <coughs> There will be periodontitis. So for them, deep curettage, root uh, planing and uh, splinting, periodontal surgery and selective extraction. And rehabilitative, it's like RPD, FPD, CD. When the tooth loss already, then you have to reconstruct. So that you can do by RPD, FPD, by uh, prosthesis. Oral health care providers like community dental health specialist manage population strategy incorporate oral health messages in health promotion. Dental hygienist provide care for secondary prevention strategies. Dentist supervise dental hygiene. Hygienist individual risk assessment evaluate the individual cases and refer complex cases to periodontal specialist. Then periodontal specialist complex periodontal therapy continuing education of dentist and dental hygienist. Periodontal epidemiologist monitor the impact of all strategies. Oral health educator, oral health education awareness of oral diseases and impacts.